Hello everybody and welcome back to No Man's Sky Adventures in the Past. Yes, indeed, uh, this is a special episode for you, additional to all the other episodes, as we didn't get to uh, the Atlas, which was actually, you know, my whole point to get there. But yes, I had to restart uh, the character as the other one got lost uh, somewhere in space and time in 1.0. So let's take it from here. As this is the very last episode, my intention here is to bring you uh, many varieties I found and which were interesting in colors or, you know, uh, different uh, things uh, that were really cool. But of course, you know, I'm not going to stay that long anymore uh, on the planets just you know to show you the most important that I could find also remember when you're flying over planets in 1.0 it's not always or it doesn't seem interesting but please stop over and have a closer look and see what you can find it's always worth it Thank you very much guys for the get well and get better wishes I have received while I was ill. I really appreciate that. And yes, my voice is back and doing the voiceover for you guys. The second system I jumped into offered me this planet which was heavily uh, sugar coated in pink and purple colors and look at that guys these little animals here which are quite cute reflected the colors of the planet actually directly on their skin and yes i haven't scanned that many animals yet but these ones are really cute oh and please note my records on the right hand side these stone and plant formations were actually very sporadically found and uh, I think it looks kind of cool with this uh, tint of water next to it. Yep, I liked it. Though it looks steamy guys, it was actually quite cold if you note it to the left. And three, two, one, and here we come to the next planet in this kind of purpley system I have found. Now, well, I mean, you know, hopefully it's a bit better uh, than the last planet and it does look already much better, I must say so. I mean, hello guys, uh, we all like green trees, right? So uh, let's fly a bit over uh, this planet and see what we can find and uh, yeah, it looks inviting. Oh yes, and that would be very balmy and uh, nice to explore just a little bit for you guys. Viridescent land and it's temperate exactly what I was hoping for to find here. Let's have a look at our discoveries here and yes guys I'm a little poor mouse on my second character <laughs> absolutely but we're going to do a bit better right? Certain features always looked cool in No Man's Sky right from the start and yes this planet as you can see is nice and green and uh, you know has an inviting atmosphere to check around a little bit more but yes i must say these little birds that you can see the shadows flying around i had uh, no chance actually to capture those uh, whatever i did you know trying to get a bit higher up no way, I was not able to scan those up. Nope, no way. <laughs> In this little settlement, of course, I had to talk to this geck. 
And yes, uh, small, I mean, the creature and yeah, he's going for, uh, you know, monetary figures as usual, right? Gecks don't change neither in 1.0 or later on. So I guess I'm not going to pat the little guy on his head. Yep, monetary. Yep, he is indeed. And uh, let's see. Oh, hey, cool. I got something useful for my funds, right? Well, too bad that in 1.0, uh, you know, building and base computers were not available. This would have indeed been a nice place to put the very first base computer down and make a home here. But I mean, yes, our idea is to planet jump and, uh, you know, to continue on our travels onward into you know new adventures and see more places but yeah would have been nice don't you think so guys due to my experience guys i can tell you that this planet looks a little bit warmer <laughs> than the last one and by the way if you're flying around in 1.0 the weather, you know, somehow seems to be calmer and more clear. But once you sit down, sometimes you really have uh, a steamy atmosphere like here or wind. And these little guys, very interesting, which I found here, bugged out on me. As you can see, they showed up as a plant. But yeah, I know that we have those even in our timeline, but they're very difficult to find in No Man's Sky in 2022. But hey, I mean, uh, yeah, um, it's, um, it's uh, the only interesting thing I found on this planet and we're going to move on. Nope, this new planet actually, I didn't like it very much. I almost flew away. I mean, hello, look at that, all this mist and fog in these yellow tones, you know. But however, I found that this planet had a little secret. Yep, I mean, the animals look cool, but did you see it? No? Well, let's have a closer look, guys. This is it, guys. It's my first exotic. Yep, it doesn't look like much. But I can tell you, uh, these little ones sell actually quite well. So, of course, I mean, if you see my units, just over 5,000, I was in dire need, you know, to make some units. And at night, these were actually very easy to see, very easy to farm. So all I needed was a little bit time. And uh, yeah, you know, if you get lost uh, in 1.0 or you have a problem or whatever, you need to be able to sell stuff. And look at that, actually kind of worth it. And my units go up in a jiffy. Oh yeah, guys, I did spend some time here. Absolutely. And if you're looking at this at night, it was actually kind of nice with this uh, deep purple. During storm, um, I did shelter in caves, as you can see here. And the nice thing is, you know, when the storm uh, more or less gets blown over, um, the cave uh, cleared up uh, very nicely, as you can see here, from really misty to uh, actually nice and clear. But guys, let's move on. I have my funds and we can continue exploring. Going from one planet to another, planet hopping is actually quite fun. And uh, setting down once, twice or three times in different locations will most definitely show you if the planet has anything to offer to you. And hey guys, it's all about discovery, right? And discovery it is from little color splashes in red and green to the downright really strange uh, landing platform here, completely sunken in and overgrown. But hey, it wasn't just outside. Also inside, that's the way it looked like, you know, nobody cleaned up here for the last 250 years. 
but hey, I mean, I don't care. I just need to expand my backpack. And uh, yes, I advanced nicely here on my little one and it's 50,000 to go from here. With this brand new character, I must say I also got lucky. Look at that, guys. Yeah, 1.0 dinos. It's so difficult to find them, as you know, and I found one. I mean, a whole group of them. And look at this guy. Uh, well, I must say <laughs> he seems to be having some problems when it comes to gravity and uh, running. But who knows, maybe it's the weight or the planet is wobbling in a funny uh, way, you know. But yeah, look at that, uh, scanning this uh, big guy. I'm so happy finding dinos in 1.0. Uh, look at that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy I have found those. Let's have a look at the description of this planet. Uh, dead, fields and windy? Oh well, who cares? Maybe somebody made a mistake, but hey, I found dinos. And that's really lucky, guys. Look at that. Dinos in 1.0. We got to love those ones, right? Everybody wants to see dinos. And yeah, I found some for you guys. Look at that. Um, well, I must say, you know, in 1.0, it's really difficult to, you know, to showcase them, right? Because uh, there is no photo mode and uh, they always run away. But hey, yeah, I found dinos. I'm happy. What a discovery in this harsh and yet somehow beautiful land. But hey, guys, we need to move on, right? Behold, guys, I made it to a system with uh, an atlas and uh, I must say I remember actually the very first time I approached uh, an atlas in 1.0. It was like very mysterious and I didn't know that if I will approach it, you know, it's going to shoot at me, it's going to beam me, laser beam me, shoot me or I don't know what. So this was a very big mystery in 1.0 and it was also a bit more different than nowadays. Of course, I mean, you know, it opens and uh, uh, it guides you towards the atlas inside the usual way. And yeah, just imagine, I mean, it was so cool uh, seeing this for the very first time in 1.0 not knowing what would be happening here, uh, what was the point of all of that, the mystery of everything. And I remember, um, you know, I always loved uh, to jump over those uh, little white lights uh, on the floor that, I mean, were everywhere. Because, I mean, well, sometimes if you got lucky, it uh, gave you a few words. Uh, sometimes it didn't. But yeah, it was always nice uh, to get uh, an update uh, in speech, you know. So um, yeah, this was just awesome, the landing the first time uh, on the Atlas. I remember that very well. I believe like in 1.0 or even nowadays, you know, anybody who is new to the game and uh, getting into the atlas gets this powerful feeling uh, of mystery that shrouds the whole thing. And uh, at that time, it was, uh, uh, you know, very cool getting some gifts uh, from the atlas. Like you can see here, I got actually uh, two warp cells, which will, uh, or did also at that time, help me to move ahead in this universe. But yeah, it was really powerful then as now. And uh, what you say, guys, let's have a look what this specific Atlas has to tell us. So Atlas, it's your turn. Let's see, guys. Power flowed through us. 
the creation of this universe followed the patterns of our thought. The coded constructs set within our minds and direct everything that you see and experience. You live and you die within this simulated framework. To us, long ago and far away, it is no longer real. Actually, kind of cool, guys. Wow, imagine that. And hey, finally, I got the Atlas Pass. Yes, this is where you get the Atlas Pass, guys. Oh, wow. Wow, guys, the Atlas really commands attention and is such a big feature, uh, you know, throughout the whole game and the storyline. Just let me know in the comment section how you felt or how you saw it the very first time, you know, and, uh, you know, the mystery all about it. Now, uh, guys, I must say so. I am really happy that uh, I was gifted the Atlas Pass, which in previous episode seemed to be impossible to find. Well, logically, you know, I didn't get to the Atlas uh, station at that time. But yeah, guys, this is where you find the Atlas Pass. In any case, it's now cool being able to have access to those little rooms. Um, well, okay. Um, this one didn't have much, uh, just a few plants that you can collect for carbon. But of course, it's always nice to be able to update your backpack. And uh, as you can see here, I have nicely advanced. And of course, I have to pay the 50,000 for it. <laughs> yes, yes, I know, guys. I have shown you uh, this uh, thing before this save point which you can find uh, you know in 1.0 on space stations however this thing looks so cool i really wish you know that they would give us that uh, again in our timeline and we could actually build it this would be so cool guys on a planet in the same system like the atlas I was curious, you know, to find uh, out what other uh, secrets uh, those uh, room held in the back, you know, that you need the Atlas Pass for. But, I mean, you know, sometimes you just, as you can see here, you find uh, these uh, plants, planters, which actually do look cool and where you can collect some carbon from it. But, uh, you know, I want to show you a bit more what I found. It's like uh, almost like a captain quarter, uh, easy looking. I think the only thing that's missing here is a uh, cup of tea or coffee. Uh, you know, maybe some food machine that would be great, a vendor. But I think it looks uh, kind of cool. Uh, at the same time, uh, sometimes you find uh, uh, different stuff in the rooms, which I will show you here now. Uh, actually, which was uh, or would have been very uh, well received, you know, to have that at the start, because as a small new character, you can always use stuff like that. In a different room, I actually found like a network, a hub, you know, like for computers. And uh, well, I mean, I did, as you can see here, walk a bit around, uh, but uh, no buttons you can press here, nothing uh, to interact. But uh, yeah, it uh, still looked kind of cool and uh, lots of power seems to be necessary, you know, for one station on a planet. But hey, I mean, why not? And yes, if you wondered how the planet looked like during daylight where I parked, here is a little view of that. I must say that in the regions I have explored, it seems to have a lot of those uh, snake or worm-like 
uh, stone structures or like you just have seen uh, passing on the left side of the screen you know these uh, like butterfly uh, stone structures so I have seen a lot of those also but yes let's have a look uh, uh, what we can find here <laughs> yes indeed guys butterfly wings that could hold an airport so big they are i think you only find this in no man's sky right <laughs> so it's kind of cool this one kept chasing me i guess he thought i'm an insect yummy right the planet was classified as a jungle but I mean, if I look at how many trees there are, which you can see plainly here, not that many actually. However, uh, these butterfly wings in a formation do absolutely look very impressive to me. Very cool. I loved it. From time to time, you do get chased by pirates. And uh, of course, everything went well and I had to reload my shield, which uh, by the way, you can reload with iron, zinc or titanium. And for the landing, you know, to charge that up, you need plutonium. But let's have a look now at this specific planet, which from far looked a bit weird with like a grayish, um, how shall I say, landmass. But as you can see here, approaching it uh, looks rather like um, empty stone. And uh, the color, well, now, what would you call this? It looks like, well, almost like vanilla and uh, strawberry. Uh, a funny combination indeed. Uh, well, let's have a look what uh, this planet has to offer in a very short way and, of course, we are going to be hopping then shortly onwards. Getting out of the ship, it's indeed very dusty and, uh, you know, misty in a way. And man, this plateau is void of anything. Not no plants, no nothing. It's really void, really flat, guys. It was actually only at night that I could see better this backdrop of where I had landed and it's actually quite massive and uh, nope, that wind and dust never stopped even during the night, as you can see here. Well, with all this dust going on, I think it might be a good idea to have a quick look under, oops, well, underwater, yes, where actually I wanted to scan some fish and uh, other animals I could find. Oh, and guys, one more thing, as I have said in an earlier episode, these caves, you know, underwater, they can be really deep and long running. So please, you know, uh, if you're playing this uh, 1.0 or just above, stay out of those guys because i mean once the oxygen runs out that's it and getting back your stuff will be more than difficult plus of course you will have the predators right on your back when you're not looking back on land again i found this massive guy but to my surprise he was not a predator at all Anyone loving freighters here? Well, guys, in 1.0, this is the way they look. I mean, you know, similar the way we have them today. But have a closer look, you know, the entryway is not an entry at all, actually. It's really empty behind, as you can see it here, clearly. It is always a good idea to check out, you know, green and temperate planets uh, like this one, where you can sell stuff and, you know, fill up uh, again your inventory with what you need. Uh, this planet actually has scarce resources, but, well, I think uh, of what I see right here, 
it looks good enough, you know, to grab some stuff. Plus on top you get beautiful views like this one here in 1.0. Of course, you know, even then at that time in 1.0 I was thinking, man, I wish I could take off this suit and the helmet. But now we are having 2022 and well, we still cannot do this. But who knows, maybe we are going to get that in the future on planets that look as lovely as this one. What do you think guys? Are we going to get that, you know, taking off the helmet, maybe, you know, the suit and uh, switch it to a swimsuit? That would be a uh, really cool. I really can't wait until maybe we get this one day. Taking your time in beautiful locations is always a neat idea where you can, you know, find cool features. On the same time, in one of the previous episodes, somebody said, well, why don't you check out more uh, underwater buildings? I must say, I haven't been able to get into many, but now I was thinking, okay, let's see if I can find one like this and check it out again uh, for you guys to see if actually I can get in. And uh, wait a minute. What's that? I just landed underwater, guys. Uh, well, this might spell trouble. Oof, oh yeah, maybe this is going to be a problem, guys. I have never landed underwater in 1.0, but, uh, you know, I think we're going to deal with this a little bit later on. First now, guys, let's check out uh, this building. As said before, I have checked out many buildings uh, in previous episodes that were, you know, in the water, but mostly too far submerged, you know, in the earth also stuck to go and check out, you know, the inside. However, I was thinking, okay, uh, let's check this one out. And as you can see, uh, the containers here are fully submerged and you swim in. The door is opening, but yeah, it's uh, full of water. And I'm quite sure that the next um, container, yeah, it's going to be the same thing. So yeah, it's less, uh, you know, that you have that nowadays. But in 1.0, many, many buildings are actually half underwater or even almost fully underwater and you can't get in, which is, uh, you know, a kind of bug misplaced. Now here I was able to get in, thank God. And I'm sure that this guy is also happy that he doesn't need, you know, to stand all day long in water with a snorkel, <laughs> more or less. But yes, let's have a quick look what he has to offer. It's always a good idea. And uh, well, uh, he grabs my multi-tool. Okay, uh, well, you know, what can we get from him? Uh, of course, I will have to pay something as usual, no matter if, uh, you know, which race they are. They always want something from you, of course, in return. So uh, let's pay uh, something and have a look. Okay, what are we getting? That would be... Okay, um, well, who knows? I'm not sure if I'm going to install that. But it's something I got for 100 units. In the uh, little rooms there, I didn't find anything special, so I'm not bringing this. But I guess it's time uh, getting back to my ship that is really underwater, as you can see here. Uh, well, we might have a problem. I'm not sure if I can fly off. Uh, okay, let's try and... Uh, oh yeah, I see it. There is a problem indeed. I can't get off, guys. No, impossible. Nothing is moving. Nothing is happening. Well, I guess I have to, you know, uh, uh, 
get out of the game and reload and try again. Maybe then I can take off, who knows, maybe it puts me on land. No guys, no way. I have locked out of the game completely because remember just reloading doesn't work. Uh, you will die if you reload in 1.0. So you seriously have to get out of the game and you know, log back in. But no, the ship was still on the water. I was not able to take off at all. I got stuck again. So, you know, the game is forcing you to find another solution. That means uh, you have to, you know, leave your ship behind. You have to try and find a place, you know, where you can call down your ship. Because in 1.0, actually, remember, you cannot call down your ship anywhere. You have to find a place uh, you can do so. Oh, look at that. That's kind of cool what I found here. And, uh, well, it's not exactly what I was looking for because, of course, I cannot call down my ship here. Yep, yep, guys, I got lucky. I found some buildings actually close by. But yeah, remember, when you run into a problem, the only thing you can do is find buildings, hoping that you can call down your ship there. Oh, and guys, as you can see, these knowledge stones are really tall and very skinny. Not at all what we are used to. But anyway, let's have a look now if I can call down my ship and uh, get rid of the problem we have. Uh, the only thing, you know, I mean, this one has a landing pad. This is great. So you just need a bypass chip, okay, which uh, are easily to create uh, absolutely. The question is just if I can debug my ship, let's see if not. I will have to buy another one. This is why you have to make some funds at the same time. But let's have a look, okay? Ah, uh, yep, it worked. So I don't need to buy a new ship, guys. Let's choose this E-Class system. Remember, guys, in 1.0, there is no difference between, uh, you know, the different star systems. So it's actually nice, you know, you do not need an upgrade as long as the star system is within the reach of your hyperdrive. You can just jump wherever you like. So I always choose here a system that has many planets, you know, for me to discover and of course to see if I have you know something to bring you guys in these episodes. Now of course uh, the best thing to do is always you know I sit down in the space station and I have a look now what I can find because the Atlas gave me the Atlas Pass so it's def definitely worthwhile. Also, well, the system does not tell you, you know, if it's a rich system or a poor system. You actually find that out, uh, you know, in how many ships are landing on the space station or, you know, fly around uh, in the system itself. So, yeah, this one, I think it's not a busy system, but let's have a look. All right, guys, now let's have a look what we discover here. Um, well, mostly there's nothing to find, but look at that. Uh, there might be a weapon to have here. You don't find that all the time, by the way. So, oh my God, <laughs> guys, seriously, look at that. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I mean, seriously, I got lucky here. Wow, look at this little beauty. And no, sorry guys, I cannot give you the coordinates because that didn't exist in 1.0. So, wow, and uh, yeah, look at that. I mean, 
even if it would have, you know, less spaces or whatever. And uh, I mean, yeah, guys, seriously, this is a find in 1.0. I'm really, really lucky. Look at that little beauty. It's really rare finding these guys. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I can reinstall what I really need. I must say I don't care if I would have to, you know, uh, you know, miss some stuff. But yeah, I really want this weapon. And uh, look at this price, guys. Oh, wow. It's cheap, actually. Imagine that. It's really cheap. Imagine. Oh, it's mine, the beauty. You are mine. I think you can hear it, guys, right? I have a smile from one ear to the other. I'm really a happy camper here or traveler, let's say like that. Wow. <laughs> oh, yes, guys. I feel a bit like, uh, you know, who Gollum. My precious, you know, I found one, a special one. And uh, for us travelers, of course, it's always cool, you know, having a, a, a nice weapon like this. And uh, I don't think I'm going to exchange this one fast for something less, you know. But if I think about it, uh, it's so rare to find those. I don't think, you know, it's going to be soon till I find something similar as nice as this one. But, you know, I think uh, I, anybody who plays 1.0 or just above, I really hope you find uh, something like that, guys, because it really makes you smile and, uh, you know, upgrading your stuff and having a cool weapon uh, close to you. Now, OK, let's go back to uh, discovery. This place, uh, you know, with like uh, the worm-like stone structures or snake-like, I have seen much before. But let's have a quick look. Um, okay, it's a, a planet with poisonous rain and I see some crystals over there. We're going to check out, right? I uh, haven't seen these ones before in the episodes, guys. So, oh, wait a minute. Omegon exotic. Man, guys, this is my lucky day. Look at that. So, yeah, very rare. I'm sure I will be able to sell those nicely. Just shift around some stuff to have some space. I'm also quite sure that you have noticed that from shooting the crystal, I actually got a single Omegon product. To get more of uh, this Omegon product, you just have to shoot the little balls that are coming off it. But of course, you have to be fast enough before <laughs> it uh, disappears uh, down a hill or into the ocean here. These crystals are actually all over the planet and uh, the only thing you have to do is to go and farm them. So yes, this is a perfect uh, thing to do when you need units, guys. A uh, strange planet indeed, also with those huge kind of uh, clustered eggs that give you carbon. But I saw another funny thing, which was actually these birds flying in formation, but actually they didn't go anywhere. So that seems to be another perfect bug in No Man's Sky 1.0. This actually also apart from the, you know, dancing fish out of the water bug, which uh, you can see quite often in 1.0, but it makes me smile every time when I see it. In regard to farming, guys, of course, I mean, you need a little bit time and you have to see at different spots how much, uh, you know, you get uh, for the product. But uh, yes, uh, the planet wasn't too bad. And I had a good time here uh, selling some stuff and uh, checking out how much I get in the different uh, places. 
So I found uh, this spot outside and let's have a look. Okay, uh, yes, it's in green, so that's already good. Um, yeah, so as you can see, I get uh, an agreeable price. Of course, it all depends uh, the size of uh, your inventory. Ice planets are actually one of my favorites. You know, you often get blue skies and blue water uh, that really fits neatly with whatever you find. However, uh, I didn't uh, find something really neat uh, on this planet. So I just decided, you know, to at least scan a few animals and uh, trying to bring you these as a little highlight in between. And indeed, uh, usually, you know, uh, these animals are very skittish and uh, difficult to take pictures of. So guys, just be happy that you can scan them in time before like this one. He's really trying to get, uh, you know, away from me as fast as he can, actually. And it's really, really difficult, you know, uh, to get a good screenshot. So, yes, the best thing to do usually is uh, instead of just getting a backside shot, you know, go to uh, your menu and check there. Here we are properly presented, right? And this guy is actually quite heavy. This actually made me really laugh. Why? Because I believe the game couldn't decide do we manifest it above or below the bridge? <laughs> yes, for sure. The game had a little problem here putting that together properly. So we have like a cave uh, there to the right where it continues, but at the same time, you know, creating an opening and maybe a bridge and placing, uh, you know, the product here at the same time, maybe must have been too much. And yes, as you can see here, guys, it's heridium and not gold. Once uh, back in space, the game actually shows you points of interest here, black and red, and uh, of course all the other planets. The black, uh, by the way, is for black holes and the red shows you um, Atlas stations. So before I make a different kind of jump, uh, let's check quickly out one more Atlas station and uh, see which one we're going to get there. Indeed, not all Atlas stations are the same, you know. So let's hope we are going to get uh, an interesting one here with a good story. So let's advance, guys. Atlas, here I come and let's see which secrets you are ready to reveal to me this time. I don't know if you have preferred Atlas stations, but this one is definitely one of mine. Really mysterious, uh, absolutely. Hey, what you mean? Uh, I depart? No, I just arrived here. Yep, no, I'm not ready to depart. And wow, look at that. I'm showered with little presents uh, here uh, through the Atlas just in arriving. And another one, indeed very useful, what I got. Of course, you will get, you know, here the normal stuff, which is, you know, fuel so you can jump again into a different system. These are really nice uh, freebies I got here. And of course, you know, the warp cells are going to help also on my journey forward in uh, 1.0. It's always nice to get something for free like that. So, of course, let's see what the Atlas has to tell us here in this specific one. So, okay, the galaxy poured out through us. It was filtered through our very being. Our soul is stretched against every sky. 
We are the atlas. We are the algorithm. One adjustment within our coded framework could have changed everything. Every star, every planet, every mountain, every step taken by myriad creatures. Everything that holds meaning changed forever and on infinite worlds. Well, that's kind of deep, guys. Cool, I like it. And on top, let's see, wow, we got a health module and uh, yeah, look at that. So this is going to be used up should we get in trouble and everything fails what we have. Plus, of course, we got an Atlas stone. Very cool. I like it, guys. Okay, that's uh, very nice. I don't know what you think about that, guys, you know, the visits uh, to the Atlas. But uh, yes, please leave me a note, you know, and uh, how you see all of this, you know, the storyline and the Atlas and everything we are getting. Um, yeah, uh, so don't be shy, guys. Leave me a note. On the very next planet in the same system, I decided to have, uh, you know, a look if I can find another ship. But yeah, in 1.0, you have to wait a while. So finally, I found a ship that I liked, actually. So uh, yeah, one more thing, guys. Uh, throughout all the episodes uh, traveling in 1.0, I have not found uh, a single uh, crashed uh, fighter or uh, even on the stations, you know, I, there's never a fighter that came in. Um, so yeah, what remains is actually two choices and uh, I prefer in that case the hauler. They're uh, awesome looking and uh, I just like them. But yeah, as you can see here, I transferred uh, most uh, what I was able to do so. Uh, well, maybe, well, okay, maybe this one, but no inventory is full. So I guess I just uh, go and buy it. And as you see, it's not really expensive, but every time you buy a new one, the price is going up, by the way, just for your information, guys. Usually I like haulers that have, uh, you know, a tail in the back. But hey, and on top, uh, I had the feeling it was looking rather greenish, but this is like uh, mustard yellow and red. Well, it's fine. Perfect. There are a lot of planets uh, that you can visit uh, uh, that look nice actually from a bit afar. But uh, this would be interesting uh, as a terrain, I must say so. But unfortunately, I mean, even if I'm flying here uh, as slow as possible, you will see there are no trees, there's nothing. It's, uh, quite, uh, I mean, quite devoid of anything. So I decided to have a very short uh, stopover and, uh, you know, to move on after that. At uh, least I found some little cool, interesting uh, features uh, here and a few uh, purple mushrooms, little animals. But yeah, it was raining and, uh, you know, misty and not that nice otherwise. Most definitely too much rain for me, guys. I'm happy to get back to my ship. My second choice on the galaxy map was uh, the black marked uh, system with a black hole. So, yes, I think I'm going to try this one out, though I feel a bit strange because I have no idea how many, you know, things I'll have to repair after. <laughs> oh my god, I really did it. I have no idea if I have the resources to fix everything, guys. But let's have a look. Um, okay. Looks like, uh, yeah, we jumped uh, quite a piece away from where we were. And, uh, okay, coming in, damage, and uh, what else? Was that it? Seriously? 
I must say I'm actually relieved guys because uh, it was really a single tech uh, that I had uh, to repair and it was nothing more or less. You know, I packed a ship full uh, with resources uh, hoping uh, that I had enough. But yeah, so guys, it was not as terrible as I had uh, imagined and uh, I didn't get broke either. So. <laughs> Um, well, yes, guys, this has been uh, tested and approved by me to jump uh, into a black hole in 1.0, guys. So, yes, please go ahead when you play and don't be afraid. It's just a single item, guys. Now, here on this planet, well, looks actually nice um, with orange grass. So uh, let's have a closer look um, how this looks like actually. And, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not lucky lately with the rain, guys, seriously. Oh, this could be such a nice planet, but yeah, it's raining and uh, terrible, oh my. I think I have been unlucky with the last few visits and some I didn't, you know, I mean, didn't want to bring you even because it was so horrible. Uh, yeah, here it's quite beautiful, but um, yeah, constant rain and not very nice. Yep, let's go, guys. Well, yes, finally, actually right the next planet in the same system. I also found, uh, uh, you know, uh, orangey kind of grass and uh, trees. So yes, the light breeze was definitely appreciated. Uh, well, you know, in having all those rainy, rainy planets before. Um, yeah, actually not that bad, uh, you know, just to bring you a few uh, pictures uh, from this planet, orange grass, you don't see that very often. And uh, of course, you know, guys, this video has gotten much too long. So anybody who ever has, uh, you know, had, uh, you know, the strength uh, to watch everything. Well, congratulations, guys. But yeah, I'll just, uh, you know, keep it uh, a bit short and uh, we're soon going to be done. But yes, orange grass, nice. I uh, certainly keep my promises, guys. I told you I'm going to make a longer video for the very, very last episode. And uh, as many can't uh, play, uh, you know, 1.0. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I think it's an experience uh, to, to watch. I mean, <laughs> you know, of course, um, uh, it it's, uh, has gotten a bit long, the video. But nevertheless, um, yes, I told you guys um, that I will do my best and I'm going the distance for you guys um, to bring you uh, some features, you know, from 1.0 and through the whole episode, I think I have uh, delivered on my promise. Now on uh, this planet, um, there wasn't much either. Uh, however, I must say, it's quite impressive uh, the scale of uh, those uh, rocky chunks of uh, landmass. I think I'm really happy that uh, I never had a serious problem uh, on one of these planets because imagine, I mean, you can see here how steep uh, those, uh, you know, those uh, massive uh, walls are. Uh, imagine you break down and you have to find somewhere down here or up there <laughs> a station to be able to call your ship. I mean, that would have been really uh, terrible. So, yes, um, I guess I'm happy that never happened to me throughout all the all the travels. Um, yeah, it's uh, absolutely massive uh, here. Um, so uh, let's find a spot at least to sit down and have a quick look around. But the most important thing I wanted to bring you is, you know, to, to have the scenery here. That was the whole point, guys. Yep, steep indeed, guys. And no, really not a place where you want to be on foot for hours. Absolutely not. 
However, this creature seemed to be having fun in the sun, guys. Yep, a little stretch here and a little stretch there. He seemed to be happy living on this planet. There he goes. You might just have seen, you know, Starship distress signal. You get this automatically every time you enter a new system. But I must say in 1.0 uh, many ships, you know, that uh, are crashed on planets um, are not even there. So uh, sporadically if I saw one I stopped. Uh, but yeah, I actually just bought them on stations, which uh, was much more convenient. Same time, guys, this is going to be the very last planet we're going to visit. I will stay a bit longer here because um, I really like this planet and I wanted to show you. Uh, because, hey, the color is actually really different. So this is a verdant crust, okay, maybe some showers possible as you can see, but hey, look at that uh, grass, guys, amazing. Well, not too many trees uh, on this planet, however, you have these uh, green bushes and uh, this amazing color of uh, grass and hey, uh -huh, this little a uh, kind of buffalo looks also uh, very nice. So yes, let me show you a bit more of this planet and what I found here. The vista from above is actually quite nice. And uh, uh, check this out, guys. It's getting, uh, uh, you know, night. Uh, this planet really has amazing colors at night and also at dawn. Uh, you will see this uh, quite shortly. Look at that, how it's getting purplish and red. Um, actually uh, quite cool. Serenity at its best in 1.0. And yes, you can find amazing planets indeed. During storms it also gets uh, pretty cold and yeah, I like these colors. While continuing to wait for ships coming in, well, I have a great view. Don't you think so, guys? If you want a ship in uh, 1.0, patience becomes a virtue. As usual, you have to transfer everything from one ship to another. And of course, I made sure that I also have, you know, the same warp reactors uh, installed already on the other ship. And uh, well, let's have a look. Maybe I can transfer a little bit of uh, gold, maybe something else, you know, but uh, yes, I mean, at least in the space, you know, uh, on one spot is not that much okay in one slot it's just 100 so you're running out fast um, of uh, you know of space but uh, well the price is also a bit higher uh, than uh, previous uh, but i guess i'm happy it's fine i can always get uh, uh, more uh, units no problem so yes here we are i changed again the ship I have actually noted that uh, this ship only on the left wing has like an intersection uh, in the wing below, as you can see. I don't know for what this is. Well, who knows? Maybe it's for Gex. Well, hello, Joe. It's nice to make your acquaintance. It's you and me now. It's time to discover more on this planet. It's really funny that the storm is already here before you get the announcement. But hey, I want to scan this little one anyway. Well, let's get into the water. It should offer me some protection from the storm. So, oh, look at that. Oh, it's amazing, you know, sometimes it's like knee deep, literally, and then you jump uh, into a kind of cauldron uh, filled with water. Um, no animals apart from that one down there. 
and it looks very much a uh, predator that is making his rounds. Uh, yeah, I'm too far up to, to scan uh, that guy. I'll try a bit later on. Uh, and yeah, caves. Uh, no, he's not going in. Okay, well, in any case, I'm not going down there. <laughs> not for caves and not for the shark. But yeah, it looks like he didn't see me, guys. I did get a chance uh, to meet this guy and yeah, I think he was thinking I'm an insect. Now these ones look uh, quite interesting, so let's scan uh, this group uh, swimming here. And uh, yeah, uh, actually, you know, as you see, it's not that uh, uh, deep here, but wait a minute. He found me again. Seriously, go and eat something else. <laughs> I'm not an insect. Uh, ow! <laughs> okay, come on, eat something else. I'm not an insect. Jesus! Another glimpse in the sunlight. And yes, they look funny indeed. Oh wow, <laughs> really funny. I sold uh, my last copper, so it might be a good idea to restock uh, my reserves, you know, just a little. And uh, while well, it's not, I don't need that much, but uh, it's best to have some. And of course, enjoy the beautiful scenery here. Really sad that, uh, well, during all my travels in the past, I have not been able, of course, to give you, you know, planetary coordinates because, well, you know, that uh, did not exist at that time. So was the big planetary portals. Uh, you know, even on the space station, there is no uh, portal, you know, to travel. Uh, and even in the galaxy map, uh, it doesn't show you more or less where you have been. So even there, backtracking would be very difficult. However, at least I have been able to bring you guys with me on my travels and to show you uh, the beautiful sight uh, and cute sight like uh, this little creature here uh, which I found uh, on my travels. To rediscover all of this in the past, even you know guys, with all the trouble I have been through, even restarting and you know losing my ship and all the other problems I had during the last episodes, but, you know, I think it was still a very uh, nice, um, uh, you know, uh, experience I had. And look at this, how beautiful and serene this looks. Um, yeah, we, I mean, some stuff we just don't have anymore, you know, in 2022. Of course, we have so many other things which makes the game amazing, of course. With uh, all the controversy that has been going on at the start of uh, No Man's Sky, I still uh, believe that they actually delivered a very uh, powerful and uh, beautiful game, even if it didn't work perfectly or, you know, from the start as they promised. On a very personal note, in 2016, I just didn't buy into the hype. I just, you know, thought it was an interesting game and I jumped in and I had fun uh, discovering all of uh, that crazy stuff they gave us at that time. And uh, look how far the game has come uh, now where we are. And even now today, I think it was fun going back in time and to bring you, you know, all the beauty and the crazy stuff we had at this time. In any case, I would like to thank you all for being with me here, you know, in going back in time, back to the past of No Man's Sky 1.0. I hope you have enjoyed it as much as I did. And uh, well, for me, guys, I am back into building because that's uh, what I love to do. So see you then another time. Thank you very much and bye bye, guys.